The Long brothers are under surveillance, they think. But Catherine Long got this to me. Here. Roots and times. This is fantastic, Donald. <laughs> and I know just the boys to carry it out. Listen up. Fractured. A family, a nation, a dream. January 1921. Fierce happy there. Is a girl not allowed to be happy these days? Well, don't hate me, I'm just commenting. Hand me the tape there. Here. Boycott Belfast goods. Jesus, Tomas, do you want Mammy to skin you alive? You can't be putting up posters like that, you're running a bar. It's a public information notice, so it is. Doesn't matter what it is, she'll flay you. I'll take my chances. I'm off out. It's been very nice knowing you, Tomas. <laughs> Where are you off to? I hope you're not... I hope you're not going into Dublin. It's bad there these days. I'm off out with Sissy, Catherine and Lizzie. Lizzie O'Neill, is it? Aye. <laughs> How is she? I haven't clapped eyes on her in an age. She's working in Carton now. I might bring her back after. I do, why? It'd be grand to see her. Will you talk to her this time? I talked to her last time. You opened your mouth, but nothing came out. Look, I, I don't care if you bring her back or not. I was just saying I hadn't seen her. If you like her, you should court her. Girls like fellows who take the lead. Mr. Kinsler. There she is, <laughs> the Belle Mary. Wouldn't serve me the Sunday of the rally. How are you? She's off out, Mossy. What can I do for you? Bye now. You're looking lovely, so you are. See you later, Tomas. <laughs> That's a right cheeky rip of a sister you have. <laughs> what is it you want? A pint, is it? I was in a bugless, and that slimy fecker told me to be off with myself when I asked for a bit of Irish tea. See my poster? You're out of luck here too. Since when? Since the last while. My father hasn't had any Belfast goods sold in the place and he's sick of people asking for them. And where am I to get some quality snuff? You tell me that! I'll tell you. You won't get it in any proper Irishman's establishment. Proper Irishman? <laughs> Would you look at yourself? A jumped up child, that's all you are. Is there anything else I can get you? Mr O'Buchla, Mr Milani, sirs. Can I help you? I hope so, Tomas. We were just... Uh... Following me, are you? Watching me. Can a man not walk around his own town without being followed? We've more important things to be doing than watching you. Aye, like refusing to serve a man a decent bit of tobacco. This country has gone to the dogs. A point there, Tomas. It'll be the last point I'll drink in here. Your mother in, Tomas. She's upstairs, will I? No, it's you we want. Is she likely to come down? She's with poor breed, so they'll be at it for hours. Oh, grand. Get a few bottles of stout there for us. We've a bit of business we'd like to discuss with you. Always good to know a fellow who runs a pub. <laughs> um, so, so, what do you want? Join us at the table and we'll talk. I have to stay behind the bar if Mammy came down and... Right... Well, I'll just get myself a drink and hang on there a second now. What can I do for you? I let Melanie fill you in, Tomas. We've a bit of a job planned. Oh, I. Your brother talked very highly of you. Have you heard from him? My mother is going out of her mind. I haven't, no, Tomas. But no news is good news. Mammy wouldn't agree. <laughs> Bridget Barry is a fearsome woman, Melanie. And she was behind us with the wonder war already. That's what my father says. Is she not a supporter? She's, well, she's a bit lukewarm, but, but since Sean, well, she's not for the RIC anymore, that's for sure. Because we can't take a risk that but she... Hasn't she hung that bill banning Belfast goods over the bar? Mammy's not for the British. Tell the lad about the job. We're a bit short of men since the arrest of the two lads the other evening. What lads? Conway and Blake. Conway, the school teacher. And Blake, the butcher's apprentice. As fine a soldier as ever there was. That's a blow. On top of Harris and Colgan, it's a disaster. Which is why we've come. What'll I have to do? What you're told, for starters. <laughs> Which will be? 
We're planning an ambush for the Minute RIC. The local lads? Dwyer and them? Have you got a problem with that? They came for Sean. So no, I've got no problem. Because if you have... I said I don't. There's no room for old sentiments. I know that. This lad was there at Croke Park last November. He saw what they're capable of. I did. All right. For this ambush, we need men we can trust. You can trust me. Have you ever had to fire a gun at someone? No. And you think you might like to? Only if it wears a British uniform. That's the spirit. This is to go no further than across this table. Have you got me? Cross my heart. Hope to die, eh? (laughs) Good man. Right. For the past few weeks, we've had a few boys keeping an eye on the RIC routine. The Long Brothers. You know them. Up to Mildlair Road there. John and Patrick, is it? The very men. They've been keeping tabs on their RIC neighbours. Looking to see what times they change shift. What time they do their rounds at. What routes they take. That sort of thing. We now know they start their nightly patrol dead on ten o'clock. They go in single file, about six of them, down the Moigler Road, past the church and on into the town. The plan is to catch them at the church. The low wall opposite it there, that's where it'll take place. Once the first shot goes off, all hell will break loose. The first shot has to be a good one. It has to fell someone. Fell them all, hopefully. And where do I come in? I've been told you do well in training. He's a great man with a rifle. Is that true? I. I'm used to it, as the college get me in to shoot the rabbits in spring. It's not rabbits you'll be shooting now, boy. (laughs) It'll be fish. (laughs) In a barrel. (laughs) (laughs) We're asking you to take part, Tomas. We need good shooters. If you want to walk away, walk away. But if you say yes, you say yes. I don't want to walk away. This is my fight. It's just... You know these men. Some of them, anyway. I do. I know. It's not an easy thing we're asking. We know that. Ask yourself this. If they caught you with a gun defending your country, what would they do to you? Would Sergeant Dwyer, your neighbour, what would he do? I'll tell you what he'd do, Tomas. He'd come hunting you down like he did your brother, wouldn't he? He would, I suppose. No suppose about it. Those men may say they're Irish, but in their hearts they're English. Didn't the DMP and the RIC beat the heads off the people in the lockout? Didn't they do it during the land wars? We can't let them keep doing it. Didn't the British send our men off to the front? Keep them poor at home so they go off and die for the king's shilling? Didn't they try to kill all in front of them last November? Isn't Hannah Skiffington a widow now? Because they killed her husband and him a pacifist. Aye, and I saw a man killed standing right beside me at Croke Park in November. One minute he was laughing and the next... Gone. And it's the likes of the RIC that are propping them up. Are you with us, Tomas? I am. Good boy. Your brother will be proud. We'll be in touch with the details. Breathe, hang on, and then open the back door. Shorter than going around the front. Bye-bye, Colin. Take care now, love. Tomas, have you not work to be going on with? I'm just chatting to the customers, Mammy, being sociable. And drinking our profits too, by the looks of it. Mr Buckley, I'm sure you'll excuse Tomas. He has work to be going on with. And I'll work when I'm finished talking, Mammy. You're finished talking now. Go and tidy up the backyard. I just want to... It won't tidy itself. Mr Buckley and Mr... It's Mr Ubukala, Mrs Barry. And this is Mr Malani. The niceties of your name don't concern me, Mr Buckley. But what does concern me is my son. I have lost one lad to the cause and I won't lose another one. With all due respect, Mrs Barry, Tomas is a grown man now. He can make his own decisions. Tomas has had his head filled with rubbish from your Gaelic League and your volunteers and your... Tomas is no fool. He understands what's needed and what's not. And I'm no fool either. And if one hair on his head is disturbed, then I will you take what, it... You Mrs Barry? You'd hardly side with the RIC now, would you, after what they did in your Sean? Forgive me, but I've forgotten your name. Probably because it's not important. Did I ask for your opinion? It's Paddy Milani, Mrs Barry. I'm a school teacher from Leakslip. <laughs> Is it a medal you want for that? Now, I know there's no good going on when the likes of you are talking to my son, and I am telling ye to stop it. He, he has them hanging up the Belfast boycott posters, Mrs Barry. 
I couldn't get me snuff this morning. That's an entirely different matter, Mr Kinsella. Uh, I don't think it is. I couldn't get... The Catholics are treated like animals up the north. Fired from their jobs, burnt out of their houses. Why would we help the likes of those people stay in business? Well said, Mrs Barry. Well, I want a bit of snuff. Uh, Well, you won't get it here. Then I'll take my business elsewhere. (laughs) I'm sure the loss of two shillings a year will ruin us entirely, Mr Kinsella. (laughs) You're above yourself now, Mrs Barry. Nothing but a jump. Up Jezebel who married a man who... I'd leave it there now, Mossy. A bit of respect for the woman. I thank you to leave, Mr Kinsella. I'm leaving. But you'll rue the day you treated Mossy Kinsella like that, so you will. You'll rue it. You handled that very well, Mrs Barry. You leave Tomas out of your plans. Or you'll rue the day. Tomas! Charming lady. Uh, You heard what she said about the boycott? (laughs) She's with us, whether she knows it or not. Mm, I'd rather she knew it. Are you sure that young lad is as good as his brother? I think there's a lot of potential there. Just give the lad a proper chance. Only because I trust you, Donal. What are you taking the poster down for? Because... Because politics has no place in a pub. Isn't that right, Tomas? I thought you'd hung it there, Mrs Barry. We still won't be selling the goods, Mr Wibukla. It's just, like, the poster... Is not welcome. Hand the poster back, Tomas. Mammy! Hand it back. I will not. Fine so. (laughs) There now. Gone. I'll be out the back if you need me, Tomas. I'm sorry about that. Just ignore her. She's upset over Sean and doesn't know who to blame and... For her own good, she shouldn't go shouting her mouth off like that. She means no harm. It's dangerous talk in these times. I know, but she's for the boycott and hasn't she set up her women's group? Sort of peaceful coming to man. Are you on board for the ambush? I am. Then I'll be in touch. Slán, Tomás. She tore it up. I told you she'd hate it. I hate her. She made a show of me. I thought you were out for the day. Sissy's sick. Vomiting all morning. And I don't want to be catching anything. And Lizzie? Who? <laughs> well, you said you were out with Lizzie. That's why I'm asking. She was called into work. She said she thought she saw you in Carton yourself last week. No. She said there was a few of you. Drilling in that? No. Because if it was you and Mammy found out... I can't live my life for Mammy. And so what if I was drilling in Carton? Would that be such a great wrong? Do you think I want another brother on the run? Do you think I want to sit by and let the British kill us all? You sound like Sean. Good. I thought you'd more sense. I thought you had more. Do you not believe in freedom, Mary? And what freedom would I gain in an Irish Ireland? Whatever freedom you wanted, we'd be in charge of ourselves. No more British run RIC and no more... I'm not talking politics. I'm only saying, Lizzie said she saw you, and I said to her, well, if it was Tomas, isn't he feckin' stupid to be running around like an Egypt for Ireland when he should be running around like an Egypt for Mammy? You did not. And she laughed, so she did. Thank you for that. You are very welcome. <laughs> and I hate you too. <laughs> Fractured is a Down at Heel production. All episodes were written by Joe Bergen, Brendan Farrell, Claire Joyce and Martina Riley. Sound engineer is Brendan Farrell. Fractured is supported by Kildare County Council through a bursary from Creative Ireland. It is also supported by the County Kildare Decade of Commemorations Programme and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media under the Decade of Centenaries 2012-2023 to initiative.